As promised in the last video, today we are going in depth of the Fusey. Hey there, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, hi, I'm Ronnie Ocampo, and on this channel, I talk all things wildland firefighting from health and fitness, fire education, mental health, and everything in between. So, if you're interested in wildland firefighting, I highly suggest you subscribe, hit that notification bell so you guys know when I upload. So like we said in the last video, in which if you haven't seen that, I would go check that out. But this is just a simple handheld ground ignition device. It has its own self-contained ignition system in it. Um, it's really, really useful in dry light flashy fuels such as pine needles, leaves, grass, brush, like light flashy fuels like that. Um, some of the advantages of this are that obviously it's lightweight, it's inexpensive, you can get a ton of them, like a box full of them from the cache, they're portable, you can put them in your packs. I usually carry about at least two to four in my packs. So I'll just put either two or one on each side of my pack. Um, they are great for prescribed burns, backfires, um, also if you need to make an emergency safety zone, these are awesome for that, so that's why I keep these in my pack, just in case. Some other advantages of this are that it's covered in a wax material, so it's water resistant. It's not waterproof, but water resistant. It can burn up to 10 minutes long. You can also connect them. Um, these ones have been, been in my pack for a long time, so they're kind of warped, so I can't connect these. But you can put a stick or something in there to kind of give you a little bit of extra length away from your body. So let's talk about the disadvantages of these bad boys. So like I said, they are covered in a wax material, so it's water resistant, not waterproof. So if these get really wet, they're gonna be ineffective. You're not gonna be able to use them. Also, if the fuel is wet, it's gonna be have a really hard time lighting that as well, obviously. When this gets going, it gets really, really going. It's very, very hot. The material that comes out of it is called slag, and it also produces noxious fumes. So you wanna make sure you keep that away from your face. Let's talk about the anatomy real quick. So you have the body of this, you have the handle here which can extend. So as you can see on this one, the handle's extended all the way. I can stick my finger in here before I hit the butt of it, whereas the butt is right here on this one. So you can extend the handle so that will give you a little bit more room away from your body. And then of course you have the striker cap and the striker cap tape, you're gonna just rip that up this top part will come off. It has like a little striker, so think of like a match. It's gonna have a little striker on it. There'll be a striker on the body of this one. You're just gonna light it away from you, down and away. Um, it has to be said, sorry, definitely do not strike it up toward you because that's gonna be terrible. You're gonna have hot slag and hot material flying into your face. Let's also talk about throwing real quick. You definitely don't want to throw it over your shoulder like this. That is a no-no. That's just gonna also be dripping down your body and it's gonna be terrible. I've always been taught to throw it sideways like this. Um, if there's other techniques out there, please leave that down in the comments. I would love to know. But yes, once it gets going, it's gonna be really hard to extinguish. You're gonna have to like really snub it out on the ground. Um, and then also you can kind of like tap it out on your boot afterwards if you need to. Um, but kind of on the opposite end of that is if you throw this, so say you light it and you throw it before it really gets burning, it's just going to extinguish itself and you're going to have to use another one. So once you strike it, get it going for a minute, make sure it's fully burning and fully, or sorry, fully ignited. <laughs> and then you're going to be able to throw it. I never got to ride in a helicopter when I was doing firefighting, unfortunately. But I have been told that you need to disclose to the crew that you have fusees in your pack if you do get a helicopter ride. Like I said, I don't know if that's true, but it seems very plausible. So um, if you guys have any experience with that, go ahead and leave that down in the comments below. Also, if you guys, you know, just have any fun stories about fusees, please leave those in the comments as well for others to read. That's always fun. Um, make sure you guys check out the description box below. There's some goodies in there for you guys, like always. And then if you guys want to, if you missed it, check out the previous video that we just did. It was a broad overview of the different firing devices and also some of the methods that we will be using for firing ops. Make sure to check out the description box below for some goodies for you guys, which are always in there. And then also, if you haven't seen the previous video, we did a broad overview of the different firing devices and 
the different firing ops methods, which we will continue to deep dive into. Today was just the first firing device that we have gone into. So if you guys like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye guys. It has noxious, noxious, nox, noxious, noxious. Why can't I say that word? Noxious. There we go.